What's up guys, this is Chris from Honest Outlaw here, and today we are going to be talking about two of the cheapest 1911s that you can get no matter where you look. We're going to be talking about the Taurus PT1911, and we're also going to be talking about the Gerson MC1911. Now before we do that, I want to mention my patron supporters, thank you guys very much. Because of you guys, I can afford guns and ammo like this. Tons of the guns and ammunition on the channel are purchased by you guys, so I appreciate that. If you want to support the channel, if you like the content, that's the best way to do it. You should go down to the link in the description and sign up. Also in that description is a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. I promote it in every video because these kids could really use your help. It's a good deed. Go down there, do something awesome, give them a buck or two. I'd appreciate it. Now, this is just going to be a quick versus of two of the cheapest 1911s on the market because I'm going to give you some of the pros and cons of each and then let you decide which one that you think is really better. I'm also going to be giving you my opinion as well because what good is the video without my opinion? Ha! I don't know, but uh, anyway, let's start with the Taurus here. I have a little over a thousand rounds through this particular Taurus. I also had a Taurus previous to this with a rail that was a stainless model. This particular gun has a five inch barrel, full five inch, nine millimeter barrel. This is a nine millimeter, uh, eight plus one capacity with standard three dot white sights there. They're not night sights. We have ambi controls. Uh, it is a single action design. If you're familiar with the 1911, the hammer has to be cocked in order for it to work. You carry the gun cocked and locked, sweep the hammer off, defeat the grip safety, and pull the trigger, and you will get a round. And then as soon as the round goes off, the uh, slide will cycle, and you will be able to repeat for at least eight more rounds. We have some plastic grips here. We have front and rear uh, checkering, although visible, not very tactile. And what I mean by that is you can kind of see it, but it's so smooth it barely works. We have a serrated uh, trigger here with uh, a medium pad with a curve on it. We have no light rail here. And then we have a bushing barrel design, very standard 1911. Most cheaper 1911s are gonna have bushing barrels. Not that there's anything wrong with bushing barrels. You just don't get that cool bull barrel unless you move up into that Wilson Combat cache generally. But uh, it doesn't really do anything for you necessarily, although it just makes it a different takedown system. Bushing barrel 1911s are very, very accurate. I actually have a Wilson Combat with a bushing barrel and I love it. Uh, slide release works all right but first glance you can see off here that the Taurus looks like it's $500 because <laughs> it was. I bought this gun for around 500 bucks. At the time I purchased this it was the cheapest 1911 in 9mm available. However since I purchased this I purchased a cheaper 1911 and that is going to be this guy. This is the Gerson. Now Gerson is straight out of Turkey, straight out of Compton. <laughs> Now this one here is actually a 4.4 inch 1911, which is a departure from almost every other 1911 I'm aware of. The only guns that I'm aware of that use a single action design are 2011s that are in 4.4, and I love that uh, slide length 49 millimeter. Five inches perfect for 45. Uh, it works with the uh, speed and length of travel and all that stuff. However, the 4.4 has a little bit less slide mass, which works great for the nine millimeter and gives it that super flat cycle action of the slide there. Uh, giving you a little bit less recoil. You think this would have less recoil, but this actually does. Part of that is because it also has a rail up front and uh, it is a little bit shorter overall, making it faster. It also has a little bit better texture here, although it seems like it has less, it's actually more pronounced, so it actually works better. And then these uh, G10 grips here actually work a little bit better than these as well, allowing you to hold onto the gun. Both have front slide serrations. However, if you do like to press check, not sure if I would use these. Even though they're more prominent, it's so close to the barrel, that's a little sketchy. Don't know if I love that, but I do really like the rail. I also really like the fact that it has a significantly better and more durable coating. Uh, both of these guns have seen the same amount of wear and experience. As a matter of fact, uh, the Gerson's probably seen a little more at this point, and you can see it looks like pretty much a damn brand new gun. And considering this was actually under $500, and this was right at the $500 price point, sometimes when I look at these two guns, I'm not really sure where the money goes on the damn Taurus and how the hell they make the Gerson so cheap. The Gerson in itself actually has a a little bit better sight picture in my opinion as well and then we're going to get down to the ergonomics uh, also ambi controls superior slide release same trigger uh shoe at least but we'll get into the trigger here in a second uh mag release a little bit different better grips obviously and then uh, the uh grip safety on each one of them you can tell this is a serrated full memory pad and then this one is not serrated but it still works all right 
One of the things you'll notice about the Taurus immediately is that even though it has a lot of rounds through it, it has very, very sticky controls. A lot of the parts are made from subpar materials, and because of that and the way that they're put together, it has a very rough set of controls. The safety is pretty good, but the slide release sucks, the grip safety sucks, and particularly the trigger sucks. The trigger comes in with my trigger gauge at around 11 to 12 pounds, which is the heaviest trigger I've ever seen on a 1911, and in my personal opinion, defeats the purpose of having a single action gun. The 1911 gun in itself, the 1911 platform, has the best trigger in the business. Uh, usually breaks somewhere between two and five pounds, depending on if you get a competition model or a duty model. However, an 11 to 12 pound trigger, I literally didn't even know was possible, and that hampers accuracy a great deal. Um, yeah. A lot of times when people do gun reviews, they talk so much about the barrel quality, the barrel material, and how accurate mechanically the gun can be, but the reality is is that the interface with the user with the gun is more important for accuracy. Trigger control and the way you operate the trigger is gonna be much more important, and the way you interact with the sights is gonna be much more important than the actual barrel itself. The Gerson, however, has a crisp three and a half pound trigger, which is right what you wanna have for a 1911. I can show you that here. Ooh, it's buttery smooth. We'll cycle the action. And you can see the reset is very positive. I like that a lot. Light trigger going back, heavy trigger going forward, pushes that trigger forward and allows you to get those super fast follow-up shots. That's why the Gerson is not only more accurate, but faster as well. Add that together with the good ergonomics and the good recoil control and the slightly shorter slide, and you have a significantly faster platform in the Gerson than you have the Taurus. I don't know, I'd feel confidently armed with this. I just hear that all that stuff all the time, like, yo, old guns don't work, but my 1873 works pretty well, 1911 worked pretty well, Colt single action works pretty well. I love the classics. Could you be more accurate with the Taurus and the Gerson? Yes. Obviously, a lot of this is shooter dependent. However, mechanically put side to side, each shooter is going to shoot the Gerson better than they're going to shoot the Taurus. Just the way it is. The trigger is so abysmal in the Taurus that it makes the Gerson just seem like an amazing pistol. And for $500, that's actually pretty impressive. Uh, match that with the fact that we've only had one malfunction in the Gerson, and we had at least five or six through the thousand round review of the Taurus with varying ammunition. Uh, the Gerson is also more reliable. So you have better ergonomics, better coating, better accuracy, better reliability with the Gerson for the same controls, and the literal same price, same action, and, uh, same caliber. So far, there has been zero pros for the Taurus. And finally, we're gonna get into customer service and availability. Uh, the Taurus is available everywhere, but the Gerson's starting to be uh, available in a lot of places as well, so I guess that's a pro to the Taurus. However, as far as parts breakages and customer service goes, you really have to err toward EAA and Gerson over here. Uh, they have better customer service, in my personal opinion, along with a lot of the opinions that I have. On top of that, I've got a buddy who owns a gun shop, Mortaloo, Mr. Guns, big ups to them. And he uh, always tells me about how the Gersons very rarely come in for uh, replacement or service, and the Tauruses come in all the time. So you can take that or leave that. I know there's lots of good Taurus guns out there that don't have 10-pound uh, triggers. However, with Taurus, classically, you can either get a good one or a bad one, depending on <laughs> which one from the gun store that you buy. I mean, you could get three good G2Cs and one bad one. You could get three good PT-1911s and one bad one. Whereas I feel like the math is just a little bit better on the Gerson simply because I haven't actually met anybody that has a lemon of one of these yet. Now for a $500 gun could that absolutely happen? 100%. You have to you have to understand this is a sample size of one. Uh, I've only had one or two of these. I've only had two of these. So I'm basing my opinion on the uh, group evaluation of the people that I'm aware of plus my own personal experience with not only these guns but many many other guns. However it's really up to you to decide which one that you like. Overall I think the Gerson is just going to be a significantly better gun. But that being said, if you have a really good Taurus, you like it, eh, good for you. Let me know in the comment section below which one you think is better. I personally like the Gerson, but again, a sample size of one. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters, and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.